name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. A very good morning to you all. A very warm welcome to St. Mary's on this, the third Sunday of Easter. Uh, whether you are a regular or your first time here, you're very welcome indeed. And welcome to those who are watching us online. We begin with our first hymn, 81, Christ Triumphant, Ever Reigning. turn to our order of service as we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength you were sent to heal the contrite Lord have mercy, Lord, have mercy. you came to call sinners Christ have mercy you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God.
so we pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though by our own power and piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One, and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given this perfect health in the presence of you, all of you. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. This is the word of the Lord. Crown him with many crowns, our gradual hymn, 103.
Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Be present, O risen Lord, in your church's Easter praise that its anthems of joy and its proclamation of your victory may worthily celebrate both the mystery of your redeeming love and the majesty of your eternal glory for ever and for all time. Amen. To help us understand today's gospel passage, we need to look at the preceding verses of Luke chapter 24. The chapter, as we know, begins with the amazing discovery by a group of faithful women that the tomb of Jesus is empty and the other male disciples. But they are not believed because, to quote scripture, their words seem to them like nonsense. Peter, however, gets up and runs to the tomb. Bending over, he sees the strips of the linen lying by themselves and he goes away, wondering to himself what had happened. The scene changes to the Emmaus Road, where two disciples, possibly a husband and wife, are walking back to their home from Jerusalem. That's further than from here to Ivy Bridge. As we know, a stranger joins them. And it is only later that they realize that the strange, who the stranger really is when he breaks bread with them. Here we have two friends honest in grief. And Jesus appears in their midst unaware. Their cold hearts are fanned into flame. An ordinary meal is taken, blessed, broken and given. Eyes are opened. The story is retold, and in the retelling, Jesus shows up again. The couple rush back to Jerusalem, even late in the evening, where they find the disciples, who tell this couple that the Lord has appeared to Peter. Then the two tell the others what happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them, when he broke the bread. Now this is where we pick up our gospel reading. 
with the 11 disciples and their companions talking about what they had heard. When Jesus appears, stands among them and says, peace be with you. Initially, we read, they were terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He says to them, why are you afraid? Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look, look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. In their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. And he says to them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He takes it and eats it in their presence. And then he leads them in a Bible study, opening their minds to understand the scriptures, reminding them that the Messiah had to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. That repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from where they are, Jerusalem, and they are witnesses of these things. So what's going on here? You would have thought that in the resurrection of Christ, with the Lord defeating death, there would have been some sort of cosmic coronation with a fanfare of trumpets and a ginormous angelic choir singing something like the Hallelujah Chorus. And that everyone everywhere would see the risen Lord crowned as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But no, it's all quiet. The religious establishment in Jerusalem haven't been disturbed. The Roman army haven't been put on alert. What we learn is that the resurrection appearances of Jesus, while startling, were simply down to earth and humble. He came to little groups of his friends right where they were. One wouldn't expect some of the first words of the immortally clothed Messiah to be, pass the fish. As one Christian writer puts it, he never approached from on high, but always in the midst, in the midst of people, in the midst of real life, and in the questions that real life asks. This is the element that all the stories about Christ's return to life have in common. He appears to Mary in the garden, unrecognized. To the two, to, to the two disciples on the Emmaus Road, although with hindsight they realized who he was. To the disciples except Thomas, hiding out in a locked house. And later when Thomas was there, he's coming again and standing in their midst. Peter, having taken his boat fishing, comes back to shore after a night at sea. And there on the shore, near a little fire of coals, a familiar figure asking, children, have you any fish? We seem to be taught and told that the Lord never approached from on high, but always unexpectedly in the midst of people. But what does this really mean for us? Well, I think one of the lessons here is that the Lord is nearer to us then we realize that he comes to us, but we don't recognize him. That we are not on our own, battling life's problems and difficulties. The Lord is with us. Be not afraid, the Lord says a number of times, as recorded in scripture. And he says that to us. He whispers, those words in our ears. He speaks to us in our doubts and confusion, assures us 
that we are not alone and promises never to leave us or forsake us. Let me end with some words written by two Scots. You'll know them. Christ is the world in which we move. Christ are the folk we're summoned to love. Christ is the voice which calls us to care. And Christ is the one who meets us here. To the lost, Christ shows his face. To the unloved, he gives us his embrace. To those who cry in pain or disgrace, Christ makes with his friends a touching place. Friends, we are not on our own. Years ago, there used to be a very, what became a very familiar saying, the force is with us. And it's true, even today. Amen. So we turn to our order of service. We stand to affirm our faith in the one true God who is maker, redeemer, and life giver. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Father through the Son, who is close to us now, today and always. Heavenly Father, as the risen Christ was made known in the breaking of bread, give grace to all Christian people as they meet today and share in Holy Communion. We pray for the people in our neighbouring churches here in Plymouth and Plymouth, that all may grow and be strengthened in faith. We pray for churches throughout our land which are struggling due to small congregations and financial difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may the truth of the sacrifice of Christ for men and women be known in all the world. Open the eyes and understanding of all people who do not understand that Christ is near to them. So much of our world is torn apart by war, bloodshed, heartache and death. We pray for the people of Ukraine and their ongoing troubles. In the Middle East, we are asked by our Archbishop, Justin Welby, 
to pray for our fellow believers in Palestine who are now being targeted by Israeli troops. In particular, we are asked to pray for the safety and swift release of Leanne Nadir, a 23-year-old woman and member of an Anglican congregation in the occupied West Bank. Snatched from her home on Saturday without any reason being given, Leanne has not been permitted to have visitors or the services of a lawyer. Lord God, we pray for our sister in Christ, Leanne, and all like her who are being held unjustly in captivity. We pray for the protection of all innocent people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our own communities, families, friends, and neighbours. Guide us and help us to discern Christ in our lives, in our friends and colleagues, even in those we find it difficult to like. Bless and strengthen all our relationships and help us to be faithful in our prayers for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, have mercy on those who are so cast down by ill health or sorrow that they cannot feel any sense of divine love. We pray for all who are on our weekly prayer list that they will know healing and wholeness in their troubles and that medical help will be made available to, they, to them. May they know peace of heart and mind and relief from their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you abide with those whose days on earth are spent and now rest in Christ. We remember before you those who have died recently, including Raymond Smith, Nora Wilson and Anne Swain, and those whose anniversary of death falls today, including Clifford Woodley, Neil Sargent, Roy Redcliffe, Beatrice Duckham, Emily Bai, Alice Kinsey, Harry Williams, and Janet Fry. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And we pray for all who mourn that they might be comforted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we go forward into the coming week, May we not forget you in the busyness of our lives. Instead, may our eyes be opened to your presence with us and our hearts warmed with faith day by day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share with each other a sign of God's peace. I thought our offertory hymn was going to be 405. I thought, I haven't sung this for a long time. 405 is one more step along the, along the world I go. I think last time I sung it was probably in a school when I was taking an assembly. That was a number of years ago. It's 495. 495, the strife is all, the battle done. Now is the victor's triumph won.
Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men, women and children the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and open to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. praise and bless you loving father through jesus christ our lord and as we obey his command send your holy spirit the broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son on the night before he died he had supper with his friends and taking bread he praised you he broke the bread gave it to them and said Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Maurice, St. Thomas of Becket and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
rejoicing in the presence of our risen Lord, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. of Christ the body of Christ the 
blessing of the Lord Jesus rest upon you. May you know his love and peace now and always.
Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. number of notices beginning with some bans of marriage. I published the bans of marriage between Michael Charles Alexander Snelling of this parish and Scarlett Amanda Astley also of this parish and between Daniel Christopher Jacobs of this parish and Sophie Claire Williams, also of this parish. These are for the third time of asking. And between Reuben Lee Kane of this parish and Lauren Marie Norton, also of this parish. This is for the second time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment, why these persons severally may not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And we do pray for these three couples in their preparation. May their wedding be a very happy day and their marriage life-giving and lifelong. Um, trust that you've got a copy of the a weekly sheet, either a hard copy or uh, an e-copy. Um, something very exciting happening on the 20th of April, which is uh, next Saturday, is that it is International Organ Day. And you can come and hear and play this historic Lewis Heal Organ. Is that okay, Mila? Yes. Is that okay? Wow. My goodness. Right. Well, do you know, I've never been able to play an organ, so I think I might come along and just go have a, have a go like that, you see. Might be a nice noise, mightn't it? Yes. Well, that is from 11 o'clock to 1, so it's two hours. 11 o'clock to 1, next Saturday, here in church, come and hear and play the organ. That is on the 20th. On the 27th, two weeks' time, uh, there is a coffee morning in the church hall. Uh, um, this is usually organised by the Mother's Union. So uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, tickets are £2. Uh, there's a raffle and a cake stall and proceeds will go towards purchasing Bibles for St. Mary's School pupils. Now, it's always been a regular, hasn't it? An annual event raising funds so that the children leaving school will be presented or leaving infants, infants uh, will be presented with a Bible. Now, This, before I, I welcomed everyone, but I didn't welcome those who are newly confirmed, including Nicola uh, in, the, in the pew there. It was uh, a lovely service last Sunday evening, and it's, uh, it is always lovely to welcome uh, new members into the, the congregation. If you have not been confirmed, then please do consider. Uh, Lizzie, no doubt, will be happy to give you some sort of instruction, and then we can have Bishop James back. 
uh, uh, another time. Probably won't be this year though, probably be next year, I would imagine. Any other notices? Any other notices? Mike? Oh, I, I can't hear. Sorry. Messy Church. Messy Church. Messy Church is mentioned somewhere in the weekly sheet. 10 till 12, Messy Church. Come and enjoy yourselves. Come and help, assist, support. Thank you. Anything else? No? Right. Okay. So, our closing hymn, Shine Jesus shine, it is 317. Just to remind people that there is coffee and tea available in the church hall immediately after the service. The Lord be with you. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.